go back to another video. <laughs>
So I know that's something that we've all experienced before and what we were talking about before the video and how I wanted to make a point about that because it is it is hard. But the important thing is, is that you still show the light of Christ to those people and still turn the other cheek and show your kindness to them because they're going to see something different in you. When gossip, you know, does separate those friends and the perverse conversations, the, the perverse person, and it stirs up that conflict, but to look at them and, and talk about the truth and say, the truth of the matter is the Lord loves you, you know, which is very, very hard, but it's, it's the best thing to do. Um, so another one that we loved, another verse was James 4.11, which says, brothers and sisters, do not slander one another anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it when you judge the law you are not keeping it but sitting in judgment on it i mean again this is very straightforward mm -hmm. y'all the bible talks about speaking against one another we are called to lift each other up and be loving and speak goodness and kindness over one another so when we are not doing that we are breaking the lord's law of loving one another before we love ourselves like you know, the Lord calls us to love each other as Christ loved us. So when we are speaking harshly and negatively and, and perversely against one another, we are breaking the Lord's commandment in that. So, I mean, again, this verse clearly talks about that. Um, so the last verse that we have just for, you know, this topic, um, we said was Proverbs eighteen twenty four. This is another one of my favorites. Um, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Um, I can speak on behalf of that for myself um, because of me and CA. I've had a lot of friends recently um, from home and school, whatever it is that, you know, like you lose touch with some of your friends, that just happens. Um, and some friends that have definitely hurt me, but um, there is a friend that does stick closer than brother. And I can say that for CA recently, like we've just, you know, we have had um, multiple conversations about just the Lord and what it looks like to love each other well. Um, in that and so that's been just such a blessing so you know even though you have those friends that are unreliable so we looked up the definition of unreliable obviously we all know what it is without looking up the definition but um, simply it is not able to be relied on so when a person is not able at all to be relied on so um, just applying that mm -hmm. it's a person who is lazy in their friendship so like we were talking about um, in Proverbs 18:24, how a friend needs to be reliable, needs to be there for people. So if you're going to be lazy in your friendship, then that's, again, like going against what God has called us to do. So kind of going off of that, we asked the question, what does it look like to sit closer than a brother? And so that leads into our next point, what a friend should do. Mm -hmm. So the first verse that we have for that is Galatians 6, 2. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. So like Leah was saying earlier, talking about the law of Christ and how we don't want to break the law of Christ. So when someone's going through something, walk with them through it. It doesn't mean that you physically have to take on their burdens because we don't know exactly how they're feeling. But just being that person that is there for them mm -hmm. and being that light in their lives shows something. It shows the light of Christ. Like I've said like many times, just showing the light of Christ. Um, and then the second verse that we have to go off of that is Proverbs 19.20. Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end you will be counted among the wise. So listen even when it's hard, um, and taking on knowledge on how to be a better friend. Um, so sometimes I know that we don't want to accept criticism or we don't want to accept advice, but when we do, that's going to make us in the wise in heaven so in friendships be willing to hear what the other person has to say or Leah yeah. and I've had so many conversations about this like mm -hmm. like when something's getting on your nerves that somebody's doing just talk express to them about it, it. Just so about it. yeah express it like not being stubborn in your friendship not being willing to change is again going against God's law so yeah just being really willing to listen to your friends and mm -hmm. sit down and hear what they have to say and work on changing something. If your friend says that something's bothering them, work on changing it. And, um, cause that can ultimately build the friendship. Um, you know, like we, again, we've talked about that. Like if I have an issue with her or vice versa, like I'll say, Hey, I'm saying this out of a place of love because I want to make our friendship better. I, this, this hurts my feelings when you do this, or this, 
this affects me when you say this. I mean, those things are so important um, to sit and listen to one, you know, one another and to sit and be in community, like we said earlier, with each other. Um, listening is so important, and I don't know if you feel that way, but I, I really believe that, like, our generation, you know, kids our age, older, younger, um, listening is not something people do anymore. It mm -hmm. is, I'm listening, but to give an answer. Like, while you're talking, I'm listening, but I'm also thinking of an answer. Yep. Um, so when you're with those friends, like, that's why I love CA so much, is if I call her, I know she's listening um, to give me an answer and to love me well, but I know she's listening because she cares, you know, and that's right. another thing that we're called to do. Okay, y'all, so for the last point of our video, we're just going to be talking about how a good friend will love at all times, even when it is so hard and so difficult, um, a good friend will love at all times. So one of the verses that we found for just this topic in general is one of, again, one of my favorites. I love all these verses, but one of my absolute favorites, um, Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born at a time of adversity. So, um... But again, these are all very, very straightforward. And if you guys need clarity on any of these, again, you can email us or DM us. But so this one I just love because it really does get down to it gets down to the root of the issue is friends should just love one another, which, again, is it's much easier said than done. If you're in the middle of a fight with your best friend or whatever it is, it's, it's sometimes hard to say it's OK. I love them. I love them. I love them. But a friend really does love. Um, and when you least expect it, when you're go going through those trials or when you're going through the hard things um, with those friends and you're growing in community and you're growing in love, um, that's when a true friend is born at a time of mm -hmm. adversity. It's, it's when you don't expect it. The Lord places those people in front of you because you work through the hard stuff together. So that's one thing that we really talked about that we really, really love. Um, Another one is John 15, 12 through 15, which says, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, and if you do what I command you, I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. So, Again, the beginning of that, it says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Again, that is just the basis of who Christ is, is to love selflessly. You know, that is what love is. It is to give of oneself. You know, you give up. It's In a marriage, it's the same thing. You give up yourself to love the other person. Um, so in a friendship, you know, it's it's the same thing. Greater love has, has nothing but this. Um, and one thing that we said is that, you know, it does mean laying down your life, you know, if, if, you know, a train is coming or, you know, whatever in the action movies, like that's how it is. But, you know, you can physically lay down your life for one another. But what we talked about was metaphorically, like giving of your time and your resources and your heart, giving all that up and laying down your life to mm -hmm. love someone else. It's, it's giving up those things that make you comfortable to love someone else well, um, which it's, it's very difficult to love in, in a heavenly way and not an earthly way. Um, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, we know that, we know that full well. So, mm -hmm. but the last one is Colossians three twelve through 14, which says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you had a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Again, this one, the Lord kind of just wraps up with a bow. Mm -hmm. Something that we said was the way to love people is simply just to reflect Christ. And each of these point to some of the major characteristics of Christ, which is compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are some of the fruits of the Spirit. And that is in essence who the Lord is. He is compassion. He is love. He is kindness. So that's what we're called to look like is is how we reflect Christ. Um, and then, you know, I love how at the end it just says, over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together perfectly. When you love others and you look like this, it wraps all of those up with a bow and allows us to look like Christ. Um, and it allows us to love better in a friendship is when we are kind and we are compassionate and we see that um, it's another child of God, you know, that we are loving and that we're in a friendship with.
So that's all the points we have for y'all. Um, she's gonna kind of wrap it up, just kind of go over again like what we said so y'all can make sure you got those down. Okay guys, so we have four main points that we're gonna give you. So if you didn't get anything else out of this video, um, tune into this part because these are what you're gonna wanna take away. So the first point we have is as Christians, we need to be in community. Mm -hmm. That also goes for us as people in general, we need community. <clears throat> we need uplifting and positive community um, community that's going to push us in our faith so that when we do go out in the world and we face trials and those temptations, um, we're going to, you know, stand strong in our faith and firm in our faith. So having community is very important. Mm -hmm. Second off, gossip can hurt a friendship. And I know that's something that we all know. Gossip is bad. Oh yeah, gossip hurts friendships. But the difference is, like, we're going to be surrounded by gossip our whole lives. Like, it's not something we're going to get away yeah. from. But the difference is choosing to partake in it. If we can say, I'm not going to partake in this gossip, or when somebody is gossiping, getting up and leaving and recognizing, hey, this isn't right. This is against what God wants me to do. Yep. I'm not going to do it. So that's the difference, knowing that it hurts friendships and it damages things. Mm -hmm. um, and then our third point is a large part of being a good friend includes walking through the good and the bad. So being there for both times. So if one of your friends is going through a difficult time or they're making poor decisions, you know, you want to show them, hey, I still love you. And what can I do to help you and be there for you in that time instead mm -hmm. of instead of walking mm -hmm. away from them and saying, oh, you are making these terrible decisions and I don't want to be friends with you anymore because it's not something that I believe in. But if we show them that we're there for them, even when they're making those decisions, they're going to see that in us and they're going to see that difference in us. And the fourth thing we have is be loving. So love like Christ, love selflessly, and be willing to lay down your life for your friends. Because when your friends mm -hmm. see that you're loving that way, they're gonna see something different in you. Like I've said so many times, people see a difference in those who mm -hmm. are loving like Christ because there is a different love that he shows. And there's earthly love and there's eternal love. And there is a complete difference in the two. So those are our four main points. And we really hope that you guys um, got a lot out of this. And like Leah said earlier, if you have any questions, please just reach out to us. Um, whether it's Instagram, whether you email us. So y'all, we know that these seem very, very cookie cutter Christian answers. But um, these are things that we've learned. Again, we're only 19 years old. We're not the these old ladies that are super wise. It's not like that. Um, you know, I, it's part of my testimony, y'all. That is the biggest part of my testimony is how I've been hurt by friendships that I really, really put a lot of trust and value in. So much so that when they were taken away from me, I realized that's what I put a lot of my hope, identity, and value in was other people. Um, so we tell y'all all this because this is what we've learned through mm -hmm. high school, even through my two years of college and same thing with her. Mm -hmm. Like, Again, we're not that old and wise, but these are things that I've learned through the years, guys, is in high school, I wish I had those godly friendships. I mean, there is such a difference, y'all, between a friend that, like she said earlier, that will talk about you as soon as you leave the room versus this has been the hardest season of my life. And the girls on my leadership team on this hall and CA have, I've never felt this loved before in my life. And again, this is a huge part of my testimony is those friendships, but these girls will stop whatever they are doing to pray mm -hmm. for me. If they see me in the hallway, these girls will hug me and just ask how my day is. These girls will pray for me when I'm not there. There is such a difference between a godly Christ-centered friendship and mm -hmm. a, a friendship that reflects the world. So these seem very, very cookie-cutter Christian answers, y'all, but I promise we gave y'all the, these answers and these bullet points to explain what we went through mm -hmm. and to explain I wish I would have known this in high school and I wish I would have these are all very basic things like love people and don't gossip but <laughs> once you apply that y'all it really will change you know a lot and we're not perfect these are still obviously things that we struggle with and yeah. that we're working on to be better friends but genuinely y'all just please take these into consideration and really you know pray about it and meditate in that in in what it looks like to be a friend of christ so um that's all we have for y'all today thank you so much for coming and we'll see y'all next time bye, bye. <laughs>
the weed pot. Oh, Paul. <laughs> Paul. Paul is it. We gotta switch to the next point. Okay. We'll see we're fixing our hair. Okay. Alright. Emails. Emails. <laughs> you bet. <bad>. Um, <laughs>